Ronin Blade, otherwise known as Soul of the Samurai, was released on the PlayStation in 1999, first in Japan on April 28th, North America on August 31st, and in Europe on the 15th of September. It was developed and published by Konami. Ronin Blade is set during Feudal Japan and allows the player to take control of one of two characters, Kotaro, a Ronin swordsman, or Lin, a ninja spy working for the government. As to be expected with Konami, the production values of Ronin Blade are very high and go a long way in immersing you within the story. Notable details include haikus in the save screen which change as the story progresses and also the tutorial in Kotaro's scenario being set as a flashback with him fighting against a childhood friend, which I thought particularly was very neat. The only flaw I could find in the presentation was the lack of voice acting, as this is a dialogue heavy action game, yep, and the Final Fantasy style character exchanges kill the flow. Obvious from what you can see, Ronin Blade plays like a fixed camera Resident Evil game, only that the firearms are replaced with swords and the bullet sponge zombies are replaced by shy guys who only know two moves and they are not telling you what they are. The close combat is slow paced and is centered around timing rather than button mashing. The moves are simple to execute but they require you to pace your button inputs if you want to achieve a combo. The fact that enemies can take a serious amount of health away from you and health items are scarce suggests further that Konami wanted you to take it slow. There is a level up system though, as well as a choice of multiple swords to expand your moveset, but the respawning enemies and awkward controls prevent Ronin Blade from achieving that intense Bushido Blade-like gameplay that it is obviously going for. Ronin Blade is a high production value PS1 title with an engaging story and is one of the more intriguing Resident Evil style games on the system. It is atmospheric and innovative with the ways it tries to immerse its audience, as only you can expect from Konami, uh, back then at least. However, I feel the combat needed a little work as it feels unresponsive and sluggish. Maybe it's because I adore the classic Resident Evil games, but I would still recommend this sometimes clunky affair for its quality presentation. Thank you for watching, please like, comment and subscribe, and goodbye.